so this next problem I have a incline and on that incline I have a box and the box is sliding down the incline with a constant velocity now what I want to do is I don't want to put my velocity on the box I want to put it above the box and the reason why I'm doing that is one of the big problems in solving problems dealing with forces is that we like to throw the velocity vector on the box. We like to throw the acceleration on the box. We like to throw any of that stuff on the box. The problem is, is that when we're developing a free body diagram, the only thing we're considering, considering is forces. Velocity is not a force. It's not even the result of forces. Okay? Cool? So, I, like I said, I've got a box that's sliding down the incline, and let's give it a velocity of 4.0 meters per second. Okay? And it's moving at a constant 4.0 per second. Now, what it's asking for is what is the force of friction? Okay? Cool? Now, this is a pretty common problem. You see it on a lot of um, physics exams. The first thing we're going to do, we've got our diagram. Oh, let's say that this is 30 degrees. I like 30 degrees. So what we're going to do first is we're going to draw a free body diagram. I'm going to take this diagram and I'm going to put it up in this corner. That way it's always there to look at. Okay? There's the box. Now the force is acting on the box. Obviously I have the force of friction. Okay? It's part of the problem, so I should have it. Now what other forces I have? Well, it is a box. It does have mass. So the weight of the box is in this direction. Okay? And then finally, there's a third force. It's referred to as the normal force or the reactionary force. And that force points up in this direction. Okay? And the reason why it's there is because of Newton's third law. The box is pushing down on the ramp. The ramp is pushing back. Okay? Now, the reason why the box is pushing down on the ramp is the weight of the box. But that doesn't necessarily mean that my normal force is equal to the weight. There are plenty of situations where we have objects being pushed against other objects and it has nothing to do with the weight. Take a collision between two cars. There's still a normal force there that has nothing to do with the weight. The cars collide. This car pushes on this car and this car pushes on this car. But those normal forces that are going on there have nothing to do with how massive those cars are. Okay? So there's my free body diagram. Now, when dealing with incline problems, the first thing, well, not the first thing, here's the first thing, here's the second thing, the third thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a coordinate system and we're going to do it in a smart way. Now, if I had no friction in my system, what would I expect to happen? Well, the box would accelerate down the incline. I want to take, I want to use the, the, the motion that that object would naturally have to help me solve this problem. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to create my coordinate system along that axis. Okay? So my x axis is going to be the direction of the expected acceleration. Now, in this problem, there is none because the velocity is constant. But what if that friction is gone? The object would be accelerating down this way. So I want to take account of that. I want to make my life easier. If I did it the traditional way, and I said that this was my x-axis, then I got a problem. Because my object accelerates this way, so it's going to do partially in the x and partially in the y. And I don't want that. I want to make it simple. Okay? The next, all right, obviously, so there's my x, and my y has to be perpendicular to that. Otherwise, it's not a coordinate system. Okay? So here's my y-axis, there's my x-axis, and then the angle in between is obviously 90 degrees. Okay? Cool. Now, from there, and looking at my free body diagram, the fourth step is Newton's second law. Sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, because I've got forces in more than one direction, I quickly go forces in the x produces acceleration in the x. Forces in the y produce accelerations in the y. I automatically go there because I know I have a normal this way, force of friction this way, and then weight, and then it's kind of cockeyed little motion here. Okay? So I need to take account of that. 
Okay? And the reason why I can split that up is orthogonality, one of my favorite words. Cool? Now, looking at my forces in the x-axis, entirely in the x-axis, I'm going to say my force in the x, all my forces, and I'm not going to look at the ma, I'm just going to talk about my forces. Well, I have the force of friction, and it's in a positive x direction. Okay? And then, what's pulling it down? Well, it turns out, because of the weight being like this, a small portion of the weight is in this direction. Okay, and we'll look back at that in a second. So all I'm going to do is say negative weight in the x. Okay. Now looking at my looking at my uh, y-axis, the force y, I have um, my normal force, which is positive, minus my weight in the y. Now it turns out that this is not going to contribute to this problem. In, in more complicated problems, it most certainly will. But for right now, it's not going to contribute. Okay? All right, so now I'm going to take care of this because I need some room to work. Also, notice how the velocity doesn't even play a part. The only reason it's in there is to tell you that it's constant. Okay? So my weight vector looks something like this. Okay? But my coordinate system is something like, oops, went a little bit too high there. My weight is something like this. Here's my y-axis. Here's my x-axis. I'm going to bring that down and bring that over so I can look at the whole thing. Okay? Now, this angle right here, it turns out that when you look at the ramp block situation, okay, that this angle here equals this angle here. And here's the proof. If this is 30 degrees, and this is a right angle, which it is, then this has to be 60 degrees. I have to sum up all my angles to equal 60 degrees. Now, I do bring this coordinate system in, like right here, and then here's my y. So right here, again, is another right angle. So if this is a right angle, and this is 60 degrees, then this has to equal 30, because that would be another right angle, okay? So this angle right here turns out to be 30 degrees. Now, if you have more questions about it, I'd be more than happy to take a second and draw it for you, okay? Now, that being 30 degrees, the angle of my incline, and I'm trying to determine what this is, well, I go back to trigonometry. This is my 30 degrees. I know sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay? Um, I'm looking for the opposite, so my cosine's already out of the way. And I know my hypotenuse is equal to mg. So this one doesn't serve any purpose. And once again, we're looking at sine. So sine of 30 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Move the h over to the other side. h sine 30 okay, is equal to opposite. Now, that's the force of gravity down the incline. That's my opposite. The sine of 30 is a half. h is equal to mg my weight. So I get mg. Well, let's do it this way first. Sorry. I want to do it this way. And by the way, this is opposite, not zero. mg sine 30 is equal to my opposite. Now this is important. Any object that's not experiencing the force of friction is going to accelerate down that incline at a value of mg sine theta, or not accelerate, but it's going to experience a force of mg sine theta. Or, using some simple, um, using Newton's second law, I can say that the acceleration of an object down an incline is equal to g sine theta. Okay? It's a nice little quick shortcut that you can put in there and it moves you along a lot faster. But just keep that in mind. Okay? So mg sine theta is the force down the incline that's not a zero, that's an opposite. Let's put a p there. 
Okay? So that means that this is mg sine theta. That the component of the force of gravity in that direction is mg sine theta. Well, it turns out that this is mg cosine theta, but that's for another day. Okay? So, back to Newton's second law. The sum of the forces, and in this case, we're only going to concern ourselves with the x-axis, is equal to ma. We know that this is equal to zero because the velocity is constant. So I've got the sum of the forces in the x is equal to zero. And the forces in my x are the force of friction, positive, minus mg sine theta is equal to zero. Or the force of friction is equal to mg sine theta. Okay? So whatever the mass of that object may be, 100 newtons, 200 newtons, or not the mass, the weight, 100 newtons or 200 newtons or whatever it is, the, the force of friction is going to be related to that. Now there's a trick that we need to go into a little bit later that kind of get rid, gets rid of that. It turns out that the, the friction, yeah, let's, let's leave it at that. Okay? Cool? So that's how you determine what the force of friction is down in the incline.